So, Assalamu alaikum students, welcome to lecture number 6 of the advanced nanomagnetism course. So, in this lecture we will uh, discuss about uh, uh, what is the blocking temperature and how we can determine it uh, by using the zero field cool and field cool curves and so on. So, uh, as, uh, as we already understand the relaxation time, the relaxation time tau is the average time which is taken by the system to jump from the one minimum to the another. And it is restricted by a barrier which is called the anisotropic barrier of the system. And this barrier is uh, changes with the volume of the particle. If the, we have a small particle, the barrier is uh, small. So uh, if this is equal to delta is equal to k uh, multiplied by v. k is the factor of anisotropic cost of the system, which is different for different materials and also changes with the size of the particles t and tau <coughs> tau naught is the atomic spin plane of v is the volume of the nanoparticle. So uh, here uh, is the Arrhenius uh, law, Neil Arrhenius law which uh, can be used to explain the uh, relaxation of the nanoparticles where tau naught is the atomic spin flip time and uh, for in, the, in the case of nanoparticle its uh, its value can uh, can down to 10 to power minus 4 second k is the fact effective anisotropic constant v is the volume of the particle k b is the Boltzmann constant t b is the blocking temperature so actually uh, in the relaxation uh, we have a competition between the thermal energy and the anisotropic energy which is the internal energy due to the LS coupling of the nanoparticle. So if our measurement time is in the less than uh, the nanoparticle flip time so there will be uh, no change of magnetization during this time uh, time of measurement and the system particles will be in the block state. In the other case, if your measurement time is large and the, and the particles can be flipped in this time, there will be a particle spin will be flipped five times during this time, and uh, therefore you will uh, you will be in the super paramagnetic state. This behavior is same as that of paramagnetic atoms with no hysteresis but with saturation and a slight shape, as we already uh, understand in the last. Uh, lecture and, and this phenomena is similar to the paramagnetic, paramagnetic system. So, uh, so what is the block temperature? The temperature at which this transition from block state to super paramagnetic state is called the TB. We already um, understand this in the last lecture. Uh, above TB, the super the uh, particles will be in the super paramagnetic state, and below TB this uh, particles will be in the block state and this uh, tb can we can uh, drive the relation for for the tb from the highness linearis equation which was presented in the beginning of this um, lecture uh, you can ch uh, change t by tb we are working uh, we are working at t is equal to tb and you can uh, take the natural log and then you will end up with this equation number 2. You can see that Tb uh, is uh, directly proportional and anisotropic constant of the material and also the volume of the. If you have a bigger particles you have more uh, high Tb. If you have a small particle the particle is um, have small Tb. So the only thing to increase the Tb to close to the room temperature is anisotropic constant. So we need some uh, one systems which have more uh, anisotropic constant. So average blocking temperature is uh, is the uh, is a transition between the block state and the super state. If you increase the temperature, you can see uh, we end up with the TC, which is the Curie temperature of the system of the nanoparticle, and uh, we will end up in the paramagnetic state. Due to the particle size distribution in the sample, we do not have a uh, particle of the same size. We usually use the term average volume and average 
blocking temperature because you can see the uh, blocking temperature is related with the volume of the particle. So normally we use the term average blocking temperature because uh, the blocking temperature depends upon the volume of the nanoparticles. So average blocking temperature uh, is, uh, is due to the uh, size distribution in the sample and in this uh, uh, slide you can see if you reduce the size of the uh, particle it comes to the single domain and we have uh, these two states and the super paramagnetic state the spin can fluctuate very rapidly. So this TB, average TB can be determined by experimentally by using the zero field and field cold magnetization curves. So in this talk uh, uh, we will understand the how we can uh, we take this uh, zero field field cool curve. Assemble of randomly oriented magnetic uh, magnetic and the particles is cooled down. So normally the, the particles are, are randomly placed in within the sample uh, and we cannot arrange uh, in uh, h is equal to zero and this uh, and we cool the sample in zero applied free to the lowest possible temperature lower than the tb and uh, at uh, at that temperature lowest temperature we applied a small field uh, why we are applying a small field because this anastropy barrier is also also depends upon the applied field if you apply a field we are aligning aligning our nanoparticle in some certain direction so therefore the uh, we should not uh, disturb the energy barrier by applied field we need to understand the internal behavior of the nanoparticles which we should apply a very small field and uh, and then uh, after the application of field the temperature is increased slowly and the magnetization is measured as a function of increasing temperature and in this uh, scenario uh, with increasing temperature you are measuring magnetization you will uh, get a zero field cool curve and for the field cool curve uh, a sample is uh, uh, after taking the zero field cool curve in the applied field we cool the sample uh, after attaining the zero field cool in the same field and down to the lowest possible temperature which from which we start the zero field cool curve and uh, the magnetization is measured uh, as a function of cooling down temperature. So in this uh, scenario, then we will end up uh, with this kind of curve. So uh, the zero field curve uh, curve is less because uh, in magnetization because uh, the particles were particles were uh, frozen in random anisotropic directions, and when we increase the temperature in zero field cool for attaining the for the zero field cool curve the, with increasing the temperature they are de blocked from the random direction in the direction of applied field and the magnetization is increasing however after attaining the tb value uh, the thermal fluctuations becomes uh, very high and now uh, the anastrop energy is uh, uh, dominated over by thermal fluctuations and the system will go into the super paramagnetic uh, range and the uh, nanoparticles can uh, change their direction very quickly. So after going to the 300 Kelvin we cool down the system in the same field and you can see uh, to get the field cool curve. You can see the field cool curve uh, changes its um, uh, direction at the TB because now we are cooling the system in applied field in some certain direction not in the random anastropy direction in the zero field curve. So, uh, so this uh, uh, difference between the zero field field cool curve also gives some information about the magnetic interaction in the system. If the field cool curve uh, becomes flattened uh, below the TB uh, this is an indication of the presence of some interparticle interaction within the system. If the field cool curve is continuous to, uh, continuously increasing below the TB, this is an indication of uh, non interacting uh, nanoparticle system. So, the field cool curve uh, uh, direction is also important in determining the magnetic properties of the nanoparticle. So, I hope you have understand this uh, how we can uh, take the experimental zero field cooled and field cool curve. Here you can see the we have. Uh, ex experiment uh, also a simulation the experiment is, is this uh, uh, this uh, blue diamonds and uh, up triangles so not diamond up triangles and the black and um, the red curve is the simulation in the simulation uh, the model used 
as uh, uh, considered only a non-interacting uh, nanoparticles. Therefore, the field cool curve is uh, continuously increasing and flattened at very low temperatures. However, in the practical sample experiment, the field cool curve flattens very quickly after the TB, which means that we have our uh, interparticle interaction within our system, which is possible in the magnetic nanoparticles. So continuous increase in field cool curve shows non-interacting nanoparticle while flatter uh, field cool curve shows interparticle interactions. So I hope uh, students you have understand uh, how what is TB and the zero field cool curve and please follow these lectures and understand in these lectures and I hope uh, it will be interesting for you. Thank you.